Getting a good clear glaze for your pottery is not as easy as it may sound. And yet, it's one of those essential base glazes that any potter should have. I mean, as all this, just a clear glaze, a glaze layer with no colorings. How difficult is that? But it isn't that easy. I had my fair share of challenges with this that I'm going to talk about in this video. And I'm going to talk about why it's not that easy. I'm going to show you some examples of solutions that may work for my pottery. So hopefully that can serve as an inspiration to you, finding out what clear glaze may work for you. So, welcome. Most often, I work with colorful glazes. And not only that, but I like to work with layers of different glazes and oxides and combine that over and under and create unique color ranges. But now then, I also need a clear glaze. And one of the situations is when I do soilware. Soilware is this combination where you take a different color clay and you uh, throw them together to create these wonderful swirly patterns. I most often been doing this in porcelain. This is the porcelain that I usually use. I use Autry Blackman. It's a super white, high quality porcelain. And then I take some of it and I color it with stains and I mix it together to create these kind of pots. Now for, for this kind of pot, of course, I don't want a colorful uh, glaze. I want a clear glaze. For the porcelain that I'm doing, I work in a different uh, workshop and we have a perfect uh, match, a perfect a clear glaze that works really well on these pots. So this is all set and done. But then I wanted to create something with the reverse effect. So working on a base of a dark clay and then adding colors to sort of give a different impression. And my first test in my own workshop was with a dark black clay I also used a high iron clay. The problem is, when it fires, as you can see here, it actually fires almost black. But then, when I glaze it, it becomes actually less black. <laughs> I would expect it to become deeper black. Just the same way that the whites are getting stronger white, or colors, whatever I use as a contrast. But it didn't. Uh, and even more on this one, even though it's the same clay, same place, this actually looks a little more brown than this one. Uh, the color here is uh, colored with uh, cobalt. And it looks good, but it could look even better if the dark clay, the black clay turned completely black. So, what is the problem? <laughs> Why is it not turning black? Well, as it is the case with most glaze issues, pottery in general, it is a rather complex <laughs> question and problem. There are many things that influence how the glaze reacts and how it turns out. There's the chemistry of the glaze and the clay and how those two chemistries work together. There's the fire. Uh, how, how high do you bisque fire your, your pot and, and what is the schedule for the glaze fire? Uh, the curve, you know, how, how fast do you raise the temperature? Do you have a hold and do you have a natural cool? Or do you have a control cool? All these factors uh, play into it. And then there's uh, the, 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 the way that the clay shrinks and expands and combined with the, with the glaze. And all, if all those factors doesn't work out, it may crackle or it may, and as in this case, change the color and make it a little more matte. And then of course there's the application. In general, with clear glazes, it needs to be applied very, very thin. That also means that you need a rather low specific gravity. Especially if you're pouring or dipping, it can be difficult to make it very, very thin. Anyhow, <laughs> the clear glaze that I'm using here is a standard clear glaze that I get from my supplier. I didn't mix this myself. And on many parts, it actually works really well, but on this particular uh, application, I don't like it. So, I decided to try out some other clear glazes. And I did 
quite a bit of uh, research in the Facebook groups and Glacy and reading in my books. And uh, there's not a clear answer. And if you're looking for the perfect recipe for clear glaze, you maybe won't get it in this video, but I hope you will get some suggestions for what to do. So instead of the standard uh, clear glaze uh, that I bought, I will mix a couple of clear glazes. Tony Hansen is uh, one of the glaze gurus of this world. He knows so much more about this than I will probably ever learn. So reading his stuff on Diggers of Fire uh, is absolutely recommended. And uh, he does have a couple of glazes that have been around for many, many years that people tend to like and that are more likely to turn out well on dark clays and on brown clays. The problem with these uh, clay types, as I understand it, is that they do release some gases during the glaze fire. And if those gases get trapped in, um, in, under the glaze, they can create these little bubbles or just a surface that looks a little bit like some sort of a filter. And of course, I don't want that. I want it to be clear and strong and black. <laughs> so um, he suggests adding a little bit of red iron oxide to the glaze. That will make it a little sort of amber. And, um, but for dark clay, for black clay, for dark brown clay, that actually doesn't affect it, but it will help make it more dark in the final uh, glazing. However, <laughs> for my application, because I'm not just using black clay, I'm doing swirlware, <laughs> or agateware as some people call it, where I combine the white or colored clay with the dark clay, and I don't want uh, an amber filter on top of my contrast. So for this taste, I'm not going to add uh, the red iron oxide. After a lot of consideration <laughs> and talking to other potters, I decided on trying out two uh, other clear glazes. So I created a bunch of new test pots like this. And as you see, it's actually funny how it look more gray and not black. If you look at the bottom where there's no glaze. This is how it turns out after the high temperature glaze fire. So this is just glaze fired and it will get darker when it's raised to the glaze fire temperature. But we also wanted to turn black <laughs> where the glaze is on. So I decided on two uh, glazes, and they're both uh, made by uh, Tony Henson. And I will put uh, the recipes here. They are public. He published them on his site, and of course I have a link to his uh, site so you can read more about them. One is a very old glaze called 20 times 5. It's a very simple recipe. There's five ingredients, and there's an equal amount of 20% of each. It's simple and it's cheap to make. And it appears to work really well for a lot of potters. The other glaze I'm going to try is a little more advanced. There's a little more uh, different components in it. Um, and there is zinc in it. Now, with zinc, I hear from a lot of uh, fellow potters, colleagues, that it's not always working so well when you do underglazes. But in this case, I'm not using underglazes. It's just a dark clay with a contrast of a colored clay. So I'm hoping that may work. At least this glaze is uh, one that uh, John Hansen formulated, especially for uh, pots using darker clay or high iron clays. So I'm hoping that works. I'm also going to do Another thing in this test, and it's always terrible when you do more than one thing in a test because then you don't know exactly what uh, made the outcome, but I will spray glaze them instead of dipping them because it is difficult to make a very thin layer of glaze when you dip it or you pour it. So this time I'm going to spray it, and if you try to spray glazing, it is a very thin layer you add. So when you spray glaze, you usually add like two, three, even more layers to get it thick enough depending on the glaze. But for this application, I need it to be thin. So I'm probably just going to spray it maybe one or two times to get a very thin and very even layer. So at least that will rule out the problems that you do get from almost any clear glaze if it's applied too thick. So I will go ahead and mix the glazes. I've shown you already how I mix glazes. I will put a link to um, 
uh, a video I made about how to um, how, how I mix glazes, how I keep track of my glazes. Um, but I'm going to jump back when I'm ready with that glaze and I'll show you how I apply to this. And then tomorrow we're going to see the result. Now I have mixed my glazes and I have the two new clear glazes that I want to try out. The GS3608, <laughs> my very good name, and the 20 times 5. But first step, as always, is to uh, clean the pot. So get rid of uh, any greasy finger marks and maybe most importantly, uh, any particles of dust left on the surface. Because if they're not completely clear, the glaze may not stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I use a damp uh, sponge, not too wet, because if it's too wet, then of course the pot is going to get uh, completely wet and it will take some time for it to dry before I can glaze it. So uh, just a damp sponge, get rid of all the dust. Ideally, you would also wash them on the inside, but for bottle shape like this, it is of course impossible. So, and it is also more likely to have dust on the outside, so it's fine. As it is likely that these two glazes are gonna come out very similar. They could be very different, <laughs> I don't know for sure, but to keep track of them, I'm gonna write a number on each of them. And I'm using this on the glaze pen. It's a wonderful invention. Uh, you can buy them in most pottery stores. It's basically a glaze in a pen and you can write on uh, the unglazed on the, the, the bisque fired pot and it will stay there. Of course this is black, my pen is black, I'm not sure how <laughs> visible it's going to be but I think it's going to be good enough for, uh, for this. So I'm basically just going to write uh, 20 <laughs> on the one where I use 20 times 5 and uh, GS on the other one just to indicate the two differences. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I want to spray glaze these ones. And that is to get an even and very thin layer, because it is crucial with any kind of <laughs> clear glaze to apply a thin layer. And if you're dipping it, especially if you're pouring it, it's difficult to leave it in the pot a short enough time. So for the bigger pieces like this bowl and the, and the vases, I will spray glaze it. But for the bowl, I will spray glaze both inside and out. That's pretty easy. But of course, for a vase like this, I can't <laughs> spray glaze it on the inside. So I will pour that in and pour it out really quickly. The same thing with the cups. I could potentially spray glaze it inside, but it's not so easy and they're not so big so I can pour it in really quickly, swirl it around and pour it out. So I don't think it's going to be a problem, at least I'm going to try. But I will spray glaze the cups on the outside and I mean usually you wouldn't spray glaze uh, a cup like this but I'm going to do it now at least for the test which is the most important part of it. So I'm going to start out with the 20 times 5 and it's always even though I just sieved it and mixed it and everything, it should be ready. I mix it to a specific gravity of about 144. And I was aiming for a specific gravity a little bit lower um, because it needs to be very uh, watery. But when I um, checked it with my finger test, it actually falls off quite, uh, quite a lot. If you look at this, uh, even with... Um, even with this specific gravity. So um, I, I just stopped at 144 and it looks, it, it feels well. Um, so I, if, 
in case you have no idea <laughs> what I'm talking about with specific gravity. It's basically a way to measure the, um, the relation between dry and wet materials, you know, so how watery it is. And for any glaze, it is important. Some glazes need to be applied <clears throat> very thick, it needs to be very heavy, so a little less water, and some need to be more watery. For a clear glaze that we want to apply very thin, a more watery solution is better. Some also use a hydrometer, the, the glassy thing that you put into the bowl. I don't like it so much. There's some reasons why it's not super precise, and besides, they break all the time. If you want to learn more about how to measure specific gravity, I do have a video uh, with details about it. It is actually not as difficult as some people think. I have a very easy method, so I'll put a link somewhere and down in the description. So now we will do the inside of the pots. And as I mentioned, I'm just going to start out with um, 20 times 5. Oops, <laughs> I forgot to turn on the video when I was, um, was uh, glazing the inside of these cups. but. They all got the 20 times 5, very nice and even layer. So now I will go ahead with the other glaze, the GS3608, and see how that turns out. This one is also mixed to the same specific gravity, so approximately um, 144, 1.44. So again, we're going to start out with the cups. Got a nice even layer. Just want to check that I didn't drip anything on the outside here. So I'm just going to take this sponge and then um, just clean that because I am going to spray it on the outside. Now the bottles, and um, I will do the same thing. I will pour in the glaze, I will swirl it around and pour it out. In case <clears throat> I do apply a little bit too much glaze and it will turn milky, nobody will see it. But I do want glaze on the inside to make sure that it's uh, completely waterproof for flowers. And again, I just want to get rid of any glaze I got on the outside because I don't want it to be too thick when I spray it. I'm gonna take out the inside of the of the head here um, because that's probably gonna get hit too when I spray it, and I don't want a double layer of the glaze, so uh, thin layers. That's it. Now the inside is glazed. Now it's time to move outside to do the spray glazing. I'm gonna start out with uh, one of the vases. Um, I never spray glazed the cup, so uh, I'm not quite sure how that's going to go, but uh, this should be good. I 
think this is enough. I do want a very light layer. And it looks fine now, so uh, I think I'm going to leave with this. Put it in the kiln. But before I put it in, I will, of course, make sure that there's no <laughs> glaze at the bottom. It does look good. Uh, that's the good thing about glazing like this and not dipping. <laughs> so, ready to put in the kiln. To glaze a bowl, I usually use a bucket of some kind and start out by glazing it on the outside because I'm going to place it like this and if I glaze it on the inside, there's a risk that I'm going to scrape off the glaze inside when I turn it. So I'm going to start out like this, glaze it on the outside and then I'm going to turn it around, put it on a piece of paper and do the inside. I think that's enough, but as I haven't used these glazes before, <laughs> I can't be sure, but I would say rather too little, because if it's too little, I can reglaze. If it's too much, it's just broken. So I will clean that up in the bottom and then get it into the kiln. As this one was, um, was uh, spray glazed upside down like this, there's, of course, a little more glaze here on the rim. I want to get rid of that, of course. <laughs> and then, I don't expect this glaze to run. It's a very thin layer, and there's nothing to indicate that it would run. So um, I'm taking the chance and just clean it to the edge and maybe half a millimeter down or something. I think that should be good. Something like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the cups. And I debated myself whether I should put it upside down and then don't get any glaze at the bottom. But then I will get some glaze inside where there's already what I need. I'll put it this way, and then I won't get anything inside, but I will of course get something in the bottom. I think I'm gonna go this way because it's pretty easy to clean. It's a thin layer. So uh, that way I won't get too much glaze on the inside. It's always tricky with spray guns. Sometimes they splatter a little bit, and it did in this case, but I think it's still okay. I'm just gonna clean the button. Just a few millimeters down. That should be fine. That was all the pots that I decided to glaze with the 20 times five, and they're in the kiln, ready to get fired. So next step is the other glaze, the GS3608. I'm basically gonna do the same thing. I'm going to glaze the vases and the cups. There's no bowl on that glaze. There's only one bowl in this uh, portion of swirlware. So I'm not going to show you that because it's essentially the same, just with another glaze. It looks the same. It's probably going to work the same. I'm going to pack the kiln and uh, get back to you when we are ready to fire. Now, all the pots with the two different clear glazes have been glazed and put in the kiln. and. Uh, of course, I'm going to add some more. <laughs> I'm not going to fire it half empty like this. So um, it will take a few more hours before I have the rest of the pots ready. And then ready to fire. And uh, in a couple of days, I should have a result. And of course, I'm going to go through that with you. I'm going to show you the difference between these two glazes and the other glaze I was using to see how it comes out on the dark clay. Now it's finally time to open and unload the kiln. And I'm more excited than usual because I've tested two new glazes that I never tried before. And of course, I'm very curious to see 
if the result is better, if the black is more black, and if there's no shouty shadow <laughs> or milky uh, leftovers on the side of these pots. So uh, I already unloaded the upper layer with the other pots that I also put in this fire. So now it's time to look at the black swirlware. Ah, it's not bad. The first look is interesting. There's definitely a difference between the two glazes. So uh, now I'll take them out and uh, I'll go inside and um, I will check them a little bit closer and talk about the different results and compare it to the first glazing I did with the standard uh, clear glaze. Now I'm inside and uh, have good light, daylight here, and it's time to compare and judge the final results. Now this is uh, what we started out with. This is the one I did with uh, the original glaze, the standard glaze that I got from my potting supplier. And it's okay, it's just not as black as I would like. And it comes out even uh, more vivid on this one, or more strong on this one, uh, with the cobalt. So now I try two new glazes, and there is a huge <laughs> difference. As you can see, one of them, I think, actually turned out really nice. It is not as deep black as I would like, but it's much closer to the black of the clay. You see here, it's uh, the unglazed version at the bottom. Unlike uh, this one, where the bottom is definitely different than the sides. And if you compare them side by side, I know it's difficult on video, but this one is definitely more clear black. This one has sort of like a, a shade on it or something, you know, like a filter. It's not the kind of black I would like. So this one turned out nice. And now the big challenge here is that it's really, really difficult to see the numbers that are put under it. <laughs> I should have known, black on the glaze, on black glaze, uh, it's not going to work so well. But there's actually a couple of them that I can see it. And because there's such a big difference, it's actually very easy to spot which one is made with which glaze. See, on this one, for example, see, on this one, I'm not sure if you can actually see it, maybe because I glazed over it, I can see that this is made with the 20 times 5. So let's look at the other one that was made with the GS3608. And that is definitely not black. <laughs> and uh, it could be the sink that is in it. I don't know for sure. I'm not a chemist. Uh, but if you look at these two, I mean, you would almost think that they were made with two different uh, kind of clays, right? But this, the same clay, you can see, if you look at the bottom, it is exactly the same clay. This is the difference between two different uh, clear glazes and how that come out. I think that's remarkable. The fun thing is though, that I actually like this very much. <laughs> it was not what I was expecting. It was not what I was aiming for. And it's definitely not black, <laughs> but it's actually a really nice color. So. I may end up doing some more with this. The good thing is that uh, the application, the spraying that I put on, seems to work really well. It's a nice even layer. There's no milky areas and, and it feels right. And uh, so from, from, from that point of view, it is definitely good. And I do like this black. So um, you can take a look at some of the others. If you take a look at these two bottles, <laughs> it's also very, Easy to spot the difference, right? I mean, it doesn't even look like it's the same clay, but it is. It's even the same contrast. But they're both nice. But this is more like what I was aiming for. I would still like something that's even more deep black. But at least now, it's not adding a cloud <laughs> to the blackness. It's very identical to the... Um, unglazed area, and I mean, with a clear glaze, that's the best I could hope for, I guess. Um, so I'm definitely happy. If you look at the cups, it's even more, 
easy to spot the difference here. Look, it's almost, this one almost got like a purple sort of shade to it. And, um, and again, that's uh, the GS uh, glaze. And uh, it's somehow it's reacting um, and, and definitely adding some color that wasn't there. I mean, this is a purplish brown and the clay is black. So it does something, whether it's, there's some chemical in that glaze that reacts with the chemicals in this uh, clay. And uh, I can't be sure what it is. I'm just testing. So um, all in all, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm a step closer to uh, what I wanted. And I found something new that I like too, which is sometimes the outcome of experiments. You get something you didn't expect, but you actually like it. And that's the good thing about it. So I hope you enjoyed this testing and learned something from it and feel more conf confident <laughs> about jumping into experiments of your own. Because as I said in the beginning, this video was not intended to give you the perfect clear glaze because it may work with your uh, clay. Maybe you need a different uh, glaze for your clay. I mean, definitely the GS3608 is a good clear glaze. I mean, I heard that from lots of potters and Tony Hansen who formulated it. It's a very good uh, uh, glaze expert. So it's definitely a good uh, glaze. It's just with this clay, with this way that I fire, it turned out this color. For your clay, for your firing, your application, it may turn out different. So um, again, thank you for watching. And uh, if you did like it, please uh, subscribe, share, write a comment if you have some good ideas. Maybe you have ideas for other glazes to try out on a black clay. Just keep in mind that I only do cone six uh, fires of glaze. So that's you know, sort of the restrictions I put on myself. Anyway, I hope to see you soon again next Sunday at 5 p.m. Central European time. I'm going to have a new video and uh, looking forward to see you again. Have a great day.